Okay, so I wanted to show you sweet folks out there how to run wires. I, I noticed quite a few cars at car shows and stuff. You'll see the wire, it'll be ran around the door, and then eventually it's going to get crushed. And it's going to cause problems with whatever you're putting on. Like in this situation, we're putting a light bar inside here. And we want to do that. All we quite simply need to do, and it takes just as much time to run these things through the door jam is as it does to actually run them correctly. So you're gonna pop your dash panel down no matter what you're working on. And you're gonna reach your hand up underneath here and you're gonna feel some cables. And I'm gonna put a little bit of light on there and show you. Underneath the dash panel, there's always gonna be cables and wires ran through. And it's generally very simple. Without even looking, you can just run your arm up and you're gonna find little bungs and little areas where you can get stuff out. Like in this situation, we've got uh, some kind of vacuum hose or wiring. I believe this is a vacuum hose, actually. We've pulled the bung out of there. And I'm going to show you how to run this cable through here. We could also use like this, the hood release right here. But in this situation, we're going to use this vacuum hose. And if you stop down at the local Harbor Freight, you're going to find some stainless steel wire like this, like what I got. And I call this mechanics wire. And all we quite simply need to do is run a piece of wire up there. We don't even have to cut it out of the can. And we just push it through there and then we're gonna eventually grab it on the other side of the firewall. Now, if we go back and look underneath our hood, we should be able to see that wire down there. And pull it right up out of there, then attach it to the end that we need. We don't need to tie knots in it or anything like that. We just need to make it to where it will pull with this and we need to remember that we're pulling this direction then quite simply start pulling our wire through now it won't hurt that once we get it down where we want it to be to give yourself a little bit of extra room you may want to slide the grommet down the hose hopefully the head of our plastic will fit through this hole but i believe it will i'm pretty sure in this situation this connector is going to fit through this hole so i'm going to grab a pick tool and try to pull it through there the rest of the way well, the head of my connector was a little bit too big to fit through that small hole, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave my wire pulled through there. I'm gonna pull up the head of my connector, cut my wiring, and then I'm gonna use my stainless steel wire to drag it back through. Now, once we've left enough space for us to be able to connect the connector, we can go ahead and affix our wire to the end of it and pull it back down and pull it back through. Now, whenever you're using this wire, make sure it comes out at the tip of it. Because if it's down here at the end, it's not going to pull the wire through there. Hopefully this works. Oh, yeah. Great. That's awesome. Now we've got plenty to make our connection. Now we're going to grab us a razor blade. We're going to cut the side of that there bung. We're going to slit it right down the side of here. Be careful not to cut into whatever it's holding. And then we can put the wire through the center of it, push the bung back in there, put a little bit of Permatex on there, and seal it up so we don't get any outside water inside our cabin. No, 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 no. This is not the moment that we start smoking crack. This is the moment that we take some shrink wrap, some butt connectors with some solder inside them, heat them up, and reconnect our wires. Super simple. When I use these solder-filled connectors, I take and splice them together. Then I fold them over once, putting them behind there. And then I heat them down and they work excellent. And once we're done, we've got a great finished product. that should last for the length of the time of this vehicle anyways. You can't go take this and start smoking crack. Stop it. Who do you think you are? Hunter Biden or something? Come on, man as his dad would say. Here's a few things that you might not know and some great tips on installing aftermarket accessories like this light bar on this Jeep. One thing that you may not know is if you open up your fuse box, you're gonna see single bladed open sections where there's nothing connected there. Well, that's what that's for. It's so you can connect power to that. So in this situation, I'm gonna run a little clip and they're just simple little female portions of like butt connectors 
and we're going to connect to that power right there so our light bar always works when the ignition is off that's kind of bad it's kind of got a win lose situation because you could leave it on on accident but during the day i'm assuming but i would rather have it turn on without the ignition if at all possible and as a slight note if you ever 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 had somebody over tighten battery cables like that and then they end up being loose unlike in this situation these battery posts are made of lead and all you have to do is grab a little machine screw loosen up the nut screw the machine screw inside there and it'll hold that thing super tight you won't ever know how many problems are caused by loose battery connectors and you take it to the shop and they sell you something you totally don't even need you can use any kind of screw you want you just want to make sure it's not too tall to hit the hood uh, that would be bad <laughs> not on the ground side but on the positive side it certainly wouldn't be good and you also don't want to screw the screw through the plastic of the battery then tighten it up and you'll have a nice nice tight cable once again without replacing the ends. Now don't over tighten it like the last person, just snug it up so it doesn't move and you're good to go. Now we've got a great light bar that works excellent and we're gonna be able to see the road super bright at nighttime. Don't use these when traffic's coming towards you because they are blinding. And we've got wiring that we can probably show our friends, YouTube, whatever. We don't have to worry about that stuff getting pinched inside the door. Take a couple of extra minutes. If I wasn't filming this, this would have took me 20 minutes to do, but turned into two hours because we're making YouTube videos. Well, hopefully you guys learned a few things out there and you like some of my little tips on getting this stuff ran. I know you guys can do it in your driveway. Remember, it's not only about what you're doing or how to do something, but it's why you're doing it in the first place. And if anybody else can do it, you can do it too. My name's Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I try to help everyone I possibly can. If you like what I do as well, turn that old volume down on the computer at nighttime, put on one of my sweet Clayway playlists, let them suckers play from front to back, click that join button, give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. God bless you folks. Have the best of days.